Welcome to the Classroom Connection, the show that takes you inside Marion County Public Schools. I'm Kevin Christian, and on today's show, we discover how giant stuffed animals are improving school attendance. You'll learn from our community why kids should and are in school to honor veterans, and we take an inside look at our most advanced student TV production programs, those at the competitive high school level. Up first, though, technology plays a huge role in education today. Here in Marion County, more than 1,200 classrooms are engaged with modern technology. But that equipment is only as good as the skills of the person using it. Chadwick Pierce takes us into some classrooms where technology drives the action. The first thing I'll do is write out the numbers so I can add them. It may look like these students are watching TV. Well, sort of. It is actually a program about math that is being projected from the teacher's computer. This is an engaged classroom, and it consists of a few components. A smart board that is basically a supersized interactive computer, a ceiling-mounted projector, a document camera, and a computer. And whatever is pulled up on the computer is seen on the smart board. The things that are really different is that they're actually able to see things more in depth. I'm actually able to show them more things that are in depth and they're able to come down. Now I'm not the, the best artist in the world, and most of us aren't, but if you're going to be pulling up things like, you know, if I'm pulling up Saturn and I'm pulling up Uranus and, and Mercury, I'm not going to be able to draw a picture that's actually going to be able to depict what that looks like. Okay? When we sent satellites up there, they had these images, and then we're able to pick up and, and see exactly what these things look like, and, and uh, it lends to better learning for the students. If you're asking yourself why do we need all of this technology in the classroom, there is a very simple answer. When they are able to come up and use this technology, they're able to take their thought processes and their ideas to the next level because they can access anything uh, on the web that is allowed by the district. That includes teacher tube videos, YouTube videos, that'll be able to take the lessons that we learn in our books and up here and then expand upon that, uh, those ideas. Sitting at a desk with a book, a pencil and paper is not the only way students learn today they are out of their seats and engaged in their learning. Just the thought of going up there and being able to, it's like a com big, big computer. And um, going on it, it's just, I don't know, to me, it's just like really cool. There's tons of like, like Mr. T was showing you that you can like write on the board and it's like a whiteboard except on a computer and it's touch screen and I like touch screen stuff. The engaged equipment is not the only technology available to the students in the classroom. There are laptops as well and they are used for going online and some other fun ways to learn. You can do like games on here, like math games that teaches you, like it teaches you how to do multiplication. There's a game on Cool Math that's a um, Pac-Man game that does um, like math problems and multiplication and it's just a fun way to do it. Now that teachers have had the opportunity to teach with this equipment and the students to learn with it, they all know now that without it could cause a reversal in the students' development and momentum moving forward. If we didn't have this at all, it would send us back 20 years okay, or, or, or 10 years. Either way, the kids are not going to be actively engaged with technology that they're using at home. Okay? The kids are learning with this technology. Um, if I try to go back to paper and pencil all the time, th it's not going to work. Th they're not going to be able to not only meet what their skills are, but they're not going to be able to expand upon that and go farther. As evidence of evolving technology, the classroom projectors ordered today are LED-based, meaning we never have to replace bulbs, which usually cost several hundred dollars each. Well, it is December, and in Ocala, that means one event that attracts more people than anything else all year long. Of course, 
We're talking about the Ocala Marion County Christmas Parade. And nobody knows this parade better than the lady in charge of it, former school board member and now private citizen, Sue Mosley. It's great to have you with us today. It's always great to be here, Kevin. I would ask you how life is after the school board, but that's not why we're here. So okay. we're going to talk about the Christmas Parade. <laughs> all right, good. First of all, how old is the Christmas Parade? I know there's some question there. There has always been question. I believe this is year 56 or 57 based on history mm -hmm. uh, back to the day when Teresa Castro, mother of Bernadette Castro, mm -hmm. a local community activist, um, started this parade with the, the then Chamber of Commerce. So any, uh, any other competitors in Florida that you think of when you think of Christmas parades? Not really, and we still hear, the, the newspaper of course writes a nice article every year, we still hear that we are the largest parade in the state of Florida. Well, 60,000 so. people. I remember, I've been, this will be my How many? 12th or 13th year 13th, hosting, uh, which is probably. crazy. <laughs> uh, I remember a time when we had like 212 units in the parade. I know we've pared that down, mm -hmm. obviously, um, but uh, give us a little hint at this year's parade. How many? How many well, and, and you know, that's, I'm yes. glad you brought that up because it's funny because as to times change and mm -hmm. we're in a little economic crunch, you know, people who normally sponsor floats or different things, money is tight mm -hmm. sure. and it is costly for a it lot is. of people. Some of our floats are very elaborate, so they're very expensive. We are at 106 units right now. Mm -hmm. I did have two text messages at midnight last night <laughs> from people who were like, can I still get in the parade? So um, yes, if they're good quality items we let them in some were beauty queens last night and then some were classic cars so they both got okay come on it has to make you feel good though that people want to be part of this yes yes and our process is a year long as i've talked about before mm -hmm. so our applications actually go out in august and then we approve everything by october 15th we just did line up last week that's usually our cutoff date but then there's yeah. a few people that we'll put in afterwards. So we'll be around 106, 110 units, okay. which has been the norm for a while. How many years have you been involved? Again, a, a mystery. <laughs> um, 23 years I have been on wow. the committee. I started out when the committee was the Chamber of Commerce Parade Committee. Then we broke off about six years later mm -hmm. to the Friends of the Christmas Parade. And I've been the chairperson for 15, 18 years, whatever it as is. As long as anybody remembers. As long as anybody remembers, because I was actually nominated as chair while it was still with the Chamber of Commerce, and I did it for two or three years. So, yeah, we all, my committee is great. It's people that have been on it for 30 years or more, some wonderful people. Bill Britt just recently retired. He came back for lineup, so we were glad to see him. Um, but I have a great committee. Everybody just kind of plugs in what they do, mm -hmm. and it works. And these are all volunteers. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, William Taylor, my co-chair who owns Combined Insurance, who right now keeps telling me health care is crazy, so the parade is on the back of my list. But, uh, yep, everybody's volunteers, and uh, we do it because we love it for the passion, for the community, and for the kids. And we, the friends of the Christmas Parade, you know, have been mm -hmm. very protective about keeping this a right. non-commercial event, keeping it about family, about children, and about Santa Claus. Why do you do it? It's a lot I, of work. It's a lot of effort. I'm sure it's a lot of frustration at times. Well, back in the day when I was a stay-at-home mom and very blessed and fortunate to be able to be a community volunteer, I was into all kinds of things. This wasn't the only thing. Now, because I work two jobs, this is the only thing that I really have time left to do. But mm -hmm. I love it. I love my committee, and I love the parade. And I just, it, that day is magical, as is. corny as that sounds. I know, I know. If you haven't experienced it, it's just an all-day deal. With I was at church yesterday, and I saw a police officer who was like, where am I working at the parade? <laughs> you know, so people actually enjoy it. We've made it fun. It is a great day. You see everybody. And then when you go down that boulevard and feel the energy. Yeah, there, there is a lot of energy with 60,000 people, mm -hmm. upwards of 60, mm -hmm. we always say. Mm -hmm. um, what's the biggest challenge? Because it's a massive undertaking that takes months, as you've mentioned. Well, the thing that, that makes me the ner most nervous is, you know, the safety issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had a couple of challenging things where a horse got loose. We have 5,000 participants, most of them Marion County school children. Right. So, um, you know, when you have a horse that gets frightened by the noise and runs into the crowd of 5,000 students and everybody holds their breath and a hush yeah. comes over the McPherson complex, <laughs> safety is an issue. And, you know, we, with little ones, it's just tough. The Ocala Police Department does so much. I mean, they really handle the yeoman's task of this event. Yeah. And we've been very blessed that we've not had any 
issues. So, How do you ensure the parade's future after all these years, especially since you have volunteers working? We had that conversation last night, because as much as it's not me getting older, mm. the rest of my committee is. And <laughs> I'll continue to Spoken lie about my age. I will continue to lie about my age for several more years. But um, we were talking about that the other day, and it's harder and harder to get new blood in, mm -hmm. because it is a year-long endeavor. It is a lot of work. And... Um, we have, like I said, we each have our tasks right. that we've perfected. So it's kind of hard to, when you tell somebody, well, you need to do this, 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 you know, the list keeps going on. They're like, I'm out. I'm not, I, can't, I don't have time. So I don't know. I mean, I, I hope I live forever to do the parade, but I doubt that'll happen. <laughs> What's the one thing people never understand or don't understand about this parade? They never understand that we don't want it to be a blatant advertisement for somebody going down that boulevard mm -hmm. because people brought their families out sure. as a family, free family event, which there are so few of anymore. Right. And we don't want to make it about this is, um, you know, company ABC, ABC yeah. going down the boulevard because yeah. they got free advertisement for 60,000 people. Yeah. So we're protective of that and that does upset a lot of the people sure. who come in. They pay a $75 entry fee. You'd mm -hmm. think they paid $7,000. Right. <laughs> like it's 75 bucks. You're getting 60,000 people. Yeah. You got a sign on the back of your float and we appreciate it. But yeah. that's the hardest thing because people get upset. All right. Last question for you. What is it with all those chairs on the boulevard? The chairs, the <laughs> is that sacred not the craziest chairs. Thing? <laughs> I love it. Two weeks. <laughs> that's only you would bring up the chairs, <laughs> Kevin. Um, I think that speaks volumes about the community mm -hmm. love that we have. And again, like I said, it's one of the few free family events, mm -hmm. and you still have sixty thousand people in Marion County that are coming out as a family. I think it's great. Yeah. But I have a question: Who are you announcing again? You and who? Who are your well, partners? This, this year's parade hosts uh, will be the same as last year. We'll have Judy Zanetti, oh, okay. who is the executive director of the Public Education Foundation of Marion County, and then Dr. Anna DeWeese, who is now over all of our Title I and federal programs for the school district. Well, so that's It'll wonderful. be the three of us. It's too hard to do alone. It's really too hard to do for two people. Is you've it? you got to have three yeah. people. Yeah, because you've got to constantly be sharing information, and nobody wants to hear me talk for three hours. Well, so. y'all do a great <laughs> job, and, and that's, a, you know, that's another thing, too. We have 60,000 in attendance. Oh, I but the even, people that watch. I don't even know how many people we, we have that watch it. And, and quite honestly, the television coverage is made possible by people in the community who pay for that. Mm -hmm. Not pay to have the airtime, but pay the crew to come out and, be, right. and, and set right. up the equipment and actually right. broadcast it. So right. our thanks to you, because even though you guys make the parade possible for the, for the community to see in person, you also make it possible for our entire area to enjoy it live and replayed throughout the month of December. Well, and then I have to give credit to Combined Insurance Services yeah. of Florida, yeah. and they have always been very generous about sponsoring it for the TV time and the Santa Claus float, which is also a big task. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to ask you if there's any surprises in store with Santa this year. We'll just have to wait and see. But there's I have been always good, surprises. and he knows I've been good. So hey, great to see you. Great to see Thanks you. Thank you for by. having me. I Absolutely. always enjoy being here. And we'll see you again on Parade Day. Yes. December 14th. <laughs> oh, well, we should say that. December, December 14th, 14th. The parade starts at 5.30. Yes. Um, starts from McPherson Complex and then reaches the television area about 10, 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. So. Second Look. Saturday in December. It has been moved from the first Saturday, which was and controversial. Ever since, ever since that was a that controversy. just hasn't panned out, but we won't go there. Well, that, that's <laughs> next year's segment. So thanks again. Sue. Thank you, Kevin. Good to see you. Well, next month we will take a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to, re to broadcast the parade live each year. And that will, of course, be the final part of our special series on TV production. This month, though, it's part three, focusing on high school programs. As Joel Hartley shows us, Bellevue High School has a rich history of video making, that's about to get a facelift. At first, I just kind of had an open elective, and I kind of en I enjoyed the idea of being able to film, and I'm interested in photography and stuff like that, so I thought I'd get more of a chance to try it out. I just wanted to do something for fun because I'm in the ACE program, and it's kind of tough, so I just wanted something to, like, release the stress and just like do it for fun. I've had students who came in because you know the other electives didn't seem so interesting and eh, video sounds kind of fun I'll give it a try and that student graduates heading into this field for a career and that's pretty exciting. Students start in Bill Krasalka's TV class for a variety of reasons but they stay because of how much they enjoy it and him. He knows it, like pretty much if I have a question for him, he, he knows, and he, know, he usually knows the answer. 
and he's really lenient and he he would never be the teacher to yell at you and if I do something wrong he would talk to me and uh, keep calm and just like teach me the right way. The success of an elective program in the high school has a lot to do with the way the instructor treats the kids. When you treat kids fairly, you treat them as people, they respect that and they respect you. You know, a lot of the times it's not me telling the kids what to do, it's the kids and I elbow to elbow working together. And I like that approach and apparently it works because the kids like that too. The kids also like working with a teacher who is often learning right along with them. Having taught both an academic subject and a technical subject, the, the technical subject requires more education, more continuing education. Because let's face it, uh, math is math and it stays the same year after year. However, in TV production, you know, we recently went through the conversion to digital and what a huge learning experience that was going digital. And now that we've gone digital, it's continuing to grow. As a technical teacher, you've got to keep up with those changes because I need to put out a student who's up to date so they're ready to go to work in the field if they choose so. Having taught TV production for 22 years, Krasalka has put out quite a few students who did just that. I have a, a hand directly into the career of quite a few kids. Uh, the, the skills, what they've learned with me, got them employed in their current position and, and s has sent them on a career. Um, I can't say the same for when I was teaching science. I, I, I don't think I had a student who got a, a job because of the skills they learned in science, you know what I mean? So in a technical program like this, you can give a kid a, an employable skill that will turn into a career. I have, I've seen it and it is extremely rewarding to see it come full circle like that. Four, three, two, one, take it. With Chris Honka retiring after this year, it may truly come full circle. Some of his former TV production students are now TV production teachers at other schools. Why not have one replace him at Bellevue? You know, I, I've thought about that. Having a Bellevue student, a prior student of mine, come out, come back and take my position would be so rewarding. It really would. Uh, about five or six years ago, I had a kid who, when he graduated, looked at me and said, I'm coming back and I'm going to take your job. And I sure hope he does it. He's a great kid and he would do a good job. But, you know, having a, someone who's been a rattler already, who knows the tradition here at Bellevue High School, who knows what we've accomplished and what we've established, to come back and continue on that legacy would be the, the utmost rewarding thing I can think of that could happen with me retiring. In the first part of this series, we featured Emerald Shores Elementary and their meteoric rise, winning best of show at the annual Student Media Festival with their first ever entry. Fortunately, that same show recently captured first place at the state level so those students are sure to benefit from the high school program at Bellevue in coming years. From video to stuffed animals, yes, I know it's a strange transition, but one that is bringing better numbers for attendance for students at Greenway Elementary. As Tom Lauder shows us, something so simple as a sign or stuffed animal brings big time results. You might think that getting perfect attendance in school is just another administrative ploy, but at Greenway, something is changing the thought process in a unique way, involving three shared classmates. But what are they? Um, I actually went to thrift stores here in town, like Brothers Keeper and Goodwill, and found huge stuffed animals. So now we have three mascots that reward our boys and girls for their perfect attendance. We have Hooty the Owl, we have Brutus the Gorilla, and we have, um, oh my goodness, who's the other one? Freddy the Frog. And um, these mascots, they're already getting worn out. Um, I'm going to have to start looking for some new mascots. Jeremiah, go ahead and get Freddy. No. All right, Jeremiah, go ahead. Yeah, we get to read stories to them, and we get, we get to teach them how to do math, reading, science, lunch, and it's like they're a real student. Are these stuffed animals a big hit? And are they changing the attendance scores for the better? We noticed there, a, a lot of kids are tardy, are uh, absent for many different reasons. We needed to encourage them in some way. But 
accidentally Mrs. Quayton one day saw Brutus, this big gorilla that we have sitting in the media center. And she, she just, it was during FCAT time, we wanted everybody here. She says, whoever gets perfect attendance this week gets to carry around Brutus. And it was a huge success. The kids were so excited. It takes two kids to carry Brutus around. Overwhelming success. So successful that this year we actually have three mascots. As the principal previously stated, Greenway has three mascots, Brutus, Freddie, and Hootie. What does she believe is the game changer, so to speak, in using these types of incentives? clever educational tool that's really helped with our attendance, plus it's kind of uh, built excitement here at Greenway. I think it's made a huge difference. Um, I think the kids are excited. It's brought perfect attendance to their attention, that it's important to be here every day and that we want to reward it in a fun way. I think that Greenway is on to something, keeping students engaged and thinking out of the box, but is it successful? I think it's been greatly successful. I think we've reduced our tardies and early sign outs by 50 to 75 percent. Um, I think part of the problem was is people were not aware that we felt that it was important for the child to be in school and that there was a district policy. Um, and uh, the third thing, the, the perfect attendance signs, that is such a simplistic thing but such a powerful thing. It's that presence, it's that visibility, it's that bragging rights to show off. We've got perfect attendance. It's another reason, it's another way to just celebrate that kids are making good choices and that we love them and we care about them and we want them to be here at school and, and doing a great job. School leaders are curious to see how this program impacts their school grade this coming year. Attendance is also big for the annual Veterans Day ceremony produced for our community by our school district. The annual ceremony is popular and prominent. Once again, Tom Louder shows us how students honor our veterans on their special day. And salute. What is Veterans Day and why do we celebrate this day? We've asked this and many other questions today of the veterans to find out just what brought them to this celebration of freedom. Well, I served in the Air Force for eight years and I've been around a lot of my family members were military and uh, there's just something about being in, around people who have served like we have in the in the military and also the joy of seeing young people that I see out here that are seemingly in favor of being part of our military. Here's one veteran's feelings on what this day means to him and the gratitude he feels towards those who didn't fight. It makes me proud of what I've done. You know, and it just, um, you get to see how much people really appreciate what you've done. A lot of people, even up to this day, stop me on the street and they'll say, uh, were you in the service? I go, yeah. Well, I want to thank you for what you did for your country. And, and uh, you never heard that for years and years. And it makes you, I don't know, appreciate what people think of you a little bit more like that. What does this day mean for the students of Marion County? And why is it important for them to be a part of it all? When you get them out around the actual veterans, the people that this day is celebrating, I feel it brings a relevance to them. They can read in books, they can see, you know, movies, but until they actually get out here and talk to the people and see the ceremonies, I think they get an appreciation for it. I want to give respect to our veterans for they work hard for us. They make us have free. If they weren't, if they didn't do that, we would not be free. We would be like they would have people controlling us and what we choose to do. Should we honor our vets more than one day each year? Is it enough to show them how we feel for everything they've done and are doing every day? I mean, one day isn't enough to be thankful for what has been given to us from these honorees here plus the ones, of course, that are fighting now. I do believe that any way we can show our veterans that we appreciate them goes a long way with all these courageous Americans. I just think it's, it's good that they start showing what people have gone through. Maybe some of these people will appreciate this country a little bit more you know, if they see what people had to go through, the sacrifice, their lives, their arms, their legs, 
and things like that and appreciate what it is. And so I, I hope it continues for a long time. This year, more than 2,000 students were on hand for the annual ceremony. Last month, we showed you how manufacturing students stopped by an Ocala business to discover how things work in the real world. This month, Pathways to Prosperity continues, with students learning more about agriculture and culinary arts. Once again, here's Joel Hartley. Everybody says, I want to be a fireman when I grow up, or an astronaut or a doctor. Eventually, we find out we just aren't cut out for certain career fields, but often not until we've already tried them. Pathways to Prosperity's goal is to expose its juniors from Denellen High to the real inner workings of certain professions so they don't waste time and effort prepping for a career that really isn't right for them. I want to be a pastry chef when I'm older, so I, like, I, I don't want to go straight into a restaurant and not know what I'm doing. I want to that's exactly why I joined this program, just to see what the, what the restaurants have to offer and what jobs they have, and that's what I learned today. Vanessa Hernandez and her classmates got a tour of the Mojo Grill to see how a restaurant works, not when it's closed and everything is calm, but rather right in the middle of the lunch rush. You know, to come into an empty restaurant, you know, kind of kind of boring. You know, they see it's busy and packed, a little bit more energy, and a, and so they can kind of get a feel, well, you know, what it's like. You know. When, it, when the place is full of people. You know, the kids are really thinking about, you know, what kind of position, if, if they're thinking about a hospitality, field and hospitality, you know, it's good to, for them to see, you know, what it's like. And, and when people are happy and people are eating and enjoying the food, and, and uh, it just make, make an informed decision, you know, as opposed to just an empty shell, you know, the building. You know, see the equipment working, see the, the burgers on the fire and the grill. You know, it's more, a little bit more exciting. I thought they were just going to show us, uh, like, the restaurant and give us food. I didn't know. I didn't know that they were gonna like go us, like take us through the kitchen and actually do step by step, hand by hand, how we, how they actually run the restaurant. I didn't know. I didn't know that there were so many jobs and so many like steps just to make one plate. Just like the waitress is supported by the cooks, preppers, and dishwashers. An animal hospital has a lot of unseen support jobs too. We want to encourage the young kids today to realize what there are for career opportunities in the animal health field, whether it be a veterinary technician, veterinarians, but there are other options as far as accounting options, uh, laboratory, and other areas within the hospital that they may not be aware of otherwise uh, working around animals, but not necessarily uh, immediately affiliated with them. Much like the trip to Mojo served to support Vanessa's decision, the visit to the Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital convinced Savannah Walker she was on the right path. I really enjoyed um, like just being able to see what I'm going to be involved with. I want to be a mixed animal vet. Like I want to be able to, you know, do work with cats and livestock and horses. Just because I just love every kind of animal. I don't care if it's a snake or a turtle. I'm just I have a heart for animals. Give us a call and talk to someone called Jan. She'll help you out. Yeah, definitely come back and see us. So. It really encouraged me to go after, especially the equine industry, because I just love being around horses. I love big animals, and I just, I like seeing all the equipment. She also looks forward to dealing with a challenge doctors almost never face. It's so difficult to be able to, like, because a person, you can ask them, where does it hurt? But a horse or a cat or something, you just have to figure it out. I think you have to be very in tune to like animals and just kind of have an understanding of how everything works. In coming months, we will continue following these students on their real world visits, so we encourage you to stay tuned. Each month on our program, we feature an employee who loves their job on a daily basis. This month, we want you to meet Deborah McQueen, a health clinic assistant who's been very busy lately after hundreds of students were sick at her school with the norovirus. I first um, started at the Marion County School Board as a paraprofessional. I worked at Ocala Springs and at Madison Street. Um, then I took a leave of absence for a while to have children. And when my girls got old enough, I loved working for the school board. So this job came available. I was one of 99 applicants and um, I was hired and I just love it. I just love it. And, uh, perfect hours for a mom too because we, I come to school with my children I leave with my children in the afternoon. Okay, you do not have a fever. Not, let me see that throat. Say ah. Uh, it's a little bit red. Do you want to gargle with some warm salt water? 
I come in in the morning, I um, usually get my ice because usually there's always some types of bumps, bruises, little boo-boos that I have to have an ice pack for. So I get my ice. Um, I always make sure that my paperwork's in order because I record everyone that walks in and out of the clinic. Um, I always have my thermometer prepared and you know, just make sure that everything's clean because I don't want the germs in here. Make sure I have my gloves available. And I usually immediately start seeing kids walking in and out. Um, usually that little fevers, um, I call home for fevers, call home for vomiting, any type of um, sickness that I feel like they should not be in school. Then I evaluate them and, and assess them and call home. I love my job because I love coming here and knowing that they rely on me, the children rely on me to um, take care of them, um, especially when Sometimes in the mornings they don't realize they're sick because they're so little. So I'm able to help them get them through the morning until their parents can pick them up. Um, and the teachers also appreciate my help and that's what makes me also love my job. Thanks Deborah, for the hard work you've shown at East Marion Elementary. I know your entire school community appreciates you and so do we. Well someone else who loves their job is our superintendent George Tomlin. He has important information to share in this month's Superintendent Spotlight. I come to you today from Marion County's Veterans Park. We have just concluded a fantastic ceremony on Veterans Day in which we recognize and honor the many veterans living in the United States and also right here in Marion County. Today we had over 2,000 of our students attend this fantastic event. We decided a number of years ago that we would hold school on Veterans Day and give our teachers the opportunity to talk to our students about the importance of our veterans and this great event. So that's why we're here today. And we also like to look at this day instead of, instead of Thanksgiving as a day to kick off the holiday season. December is upon us and we'll be out of school for a couple of weeks now, but we, this is a great time for all of us to be thankful for being here in Marion County. Our school system is a fantastic school system. Our community is very supportive of what we do. And what better way to start our holiday season by saying a thank you from Marion County's Veterans Park. And with that, we wrap up today's show. Thanks for watching. From all of us here at Marion County Public Schools, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a safe and joyous New Year.